Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, oh my gosh, uh, Iron Sights was delivered. 109 out of 110 boxes. Uh, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're still got to get me the other box later today. It's going to come in a second uh, van. But uh, it came in one of those long UPS vans, and it was the entire right side of uh, the van. I thought it was coming on a pallet, um, but it just came in the boxes. And so me and my buddy unloaded 109 boxes, uh, and uh, these are going to start going out tonight. I uh, uh, Today I'm just going to put them out like regular. I mean, I might not only get like 10 or so out, but the, uh, the, the idea is to ramp up every day. Uh, but the other thing that's absolutely for certain is that Jawbreakers is definitely going to need a fulfillment service. <laughs> I You can go to my Twitter. It's a... It's the pinned tweet. Uh, 3,300 boxes is uh, basically half of a garage. So uh, I don't know what I'm at, 11,000 or something with jawbreakers. So, oh my gosh. So, uh, but yeah, that stuff's go going out. So, uh, uh, and then somebody gave me an idea. So I, uh, funny idea. So I reposted the picture and I said, when you're a comic book owner and you uh, order five copies of Iceman number one, because uh, Marvel's really big into overshipping uh, to uh, fake fake success. Uh, but uh, this is uh, issue number two of West Coast Avengers, and it's just freaking excruciating. Uh, the main epiphany I have is that Kelly Thompson has early onset Gail Simone syndrome. So Gail Simone syndrome is someone who's actually talented. I'm always talking about this person, that person is is not in the comics on merit. They are, are in for some silly reason, uh, usually having to do with identity politics. Uh, but uh, the funny thing is that uh, the, in the old days, people used to complain about nepotism. Nepotism is when you hire your brother or your friend, and they would say, "Well, it's not that that it's not fair because." Uh, my stuff looks better, but he got higher because he's roommates. But the thing about nepotism is nepotism is not good, but it is still better than hiring based on haircut. Because when you hire your roommate, it's not like, hey, roommate, come to Marvel and you can just do anything. If your sales are terrible, I'll kill, keep hiring you. It's like, I fucking went to bat for you, you little Emmer Effer. You better fucking see. <laughs> like, the cool thing is you can talk to your old college roommate. Like, you can't talk to someone. It's like, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you for... Is it cultural appropriation if I shake your hands? What if I just go like this? I, uh, what if I just go like this? Is that okay? Um, but anyway, this is West Coast Avengers, and it sucks. It's so bad. Uh, but the thing about Gail Simone and Kel Kelly Thompson is that they both got in uh, on merit. They can actually write. Uh, but they've decided that this they're going to focus on a core group of fans that, number one, doesn't really buy comics a lot, but they're very active on social media. So they've gone for the social media bucks instead of the actual reader bucks. Um, this I, I did a video last time. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's 2018, and we are doing... Um, superheroes are on, like, a reality show? Um, things are about to get totes real. Yeah, it's stupid. So the team is, um, uh, you got, uh, so basically what happened is this is also a schnooker. Marvel is always schnookering you and lying to you. Hawkeye, which was not Hawkeye, it was Kate Bishop, uh, sold terribly, and it got canceled for low sales. But Marvel is, uh, operates off of spite, not off of profit. So, uh, Iceman gets canceled for low sales. Bring it back. What? Oh, gonna see another one. Wasp gets sale, uh, canceled for low sales. Bring it back. Uh, Hawkeye gets canceled for low sales. Bring it back. Titled West Coast Avengers. But you're gonna see this is really Hawkeye. It's it's Kate Bishop uh, being OMG so amazed balls and um like this old white dude. He's like stupid. Um, and then this it's literally canceled. Canceled, 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 because he was in Generation X, canceled. And then what we got, this guy that we see in everything, the soft purse puppy, Gordon Goodbrother, effeminate black dude. This is, this is beyond parody. So we start off, and they were just killing it right here. 
So uh, I, I actually listened to the review from Mim Hedrum uh, on this, and it's funny because you know I don't really look at the uh, I don't look at the screen usually like I'm driving or I'm doing something, and he was talking and I really like Mim Hedrum's uh, reviews, but I was like, it sounds like a kind of a normal page like he's really making a big deal that the first the first scene just is awful and uh, turns out the first scene is awful. So we are starting right here with. Every classic bit of modern Marvel. You have um, uh, really bad tangents. You have, uh, I like the curve of the bow and the curve of this uh, couple on the uh, Ferris wheel. Let's make them match. Uh, then let's have two characters making the same pose. This is called twinning. Twinning is also a, when you have your arms are kind of mirroring each other. The whole point of comics is that everyone's supposed to be dynamic, distinct, and different. If you have one person, yeah, I know they slightly twisted their bows in a way that actually makes no sense. Um, but uh, they're essentially doing the same thing. And even worse, they both have the same name. Why do they have the same name? Uh, because um, the patriarchy wants them to have different ones. Uh, so they did this, they've been doing this for you know five years. Take a character people like Clint Barton. Uh, give his name and basically everything else to a, a different character and uh, let's see if that works. Oh, yeah, it never works. It literally never works. Uh, because we don't like anyone named Hawkeye. We like Clint, Clint Barton, the real Clint Barton, not some effeminate hipster jagoff. So uh, this is it. I'm going to... Uh, okay, so the location isn't bad. Santa Monica Pier. Oh, by the way, it was hilarious watching Mim Hedrum, uh, I guess, not notice that. And then guess what American city this was based on, based on him barely knowing. He's like, in this uh, amusement park in uh, 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 Santa Barbara. <laughs> like, what? Santa Barbara? What the hell are you talking about? Um, uh, but anyway, it's like, so uh, Hawkeye, a.k.a. Clint Barton, man with a plan, or at least lots of arrows. Yeah, that's... So if you're wondering, you go, oh, that's annoying. Why do they do that? First of all, they all do that. And they do that because it was funny and cute and new 10 plus years ago when it was done in Scott Pilgrim. One of the things about SJWs is uh, most of them actually don't like mainstream American superhero comics. They like manga. They like anime. They like uh, Scott Pilgrim, whatever you call that, Canadian manga. They don't like superhero comics they think they're dumb and silly that's why they turn almost all of them into sitcoms oh boy but look at yeah kate's chest that is the same chest as yeah they could yeah uh so uh then uh they say hawkeye aka kate bishop filled with sass also has arrows again this is the actual caption man when we get tiger back to being herself again she is going to be so pissed about this the putto the putty arrows take forever to get out of clothes. Fur has got to be a thousand times worse. This is what I'm saying, girl. Okay, the only part of that that was fake was the girl at the end. So then they uh, sit there and again, twinning the exact same. Uh, look at these like bland, bored faces. So then we get to see Tigra. Oh, Tigra. Do you remember Tigra? Yeah, this is not Tigra. Um, this is a mom who does too much CrossFit and has lost most of her curves. The entire point of Tigra is she was basically supposed to be sex personified. She was primal. She was carnal. Uh, she The whole point is she's really curvy. She was always like in heat and like stalking the other Avengers, trying to mate with them. Uh, this it, It's not any body type. There's actually a, a specific body type that is correct for her. One of the things SJWs always do is they always do... Uh, reductio ad absurdum i think it's called it's the thing where you go uh uh i like when women are curvy they're like oh so all women have to be curvy so um aunt may has to have like triple z boobs and be in a bikini yeah that's what i said that's exactly what i said uh no not all women need to be curvy but there are some where it really really is part of their character their character looks off if you don't draw them that way and tiger would definitely be one of those so then we get uh, to, uh, they introduce, they spend, so one page, then two pages just to describe, it. oh no, uh, so yeah, so um, 
Kid, Oma Kid Omega, a.k.a. Quentin Quire, Omega-level mutant, recently has lost some of his power in an act of self-sacrifice. Feels fine about it, really. Stop asking. <laughs> um, Fuse, a.k.a. Johnny Watts, current mimicking the physical properties of a literal brick, also currently in way over his head. Uh, by the way, this is the romantic lead for... The main character because this is not a team book it's a kate bishop book um and he is effeminate ineffectual and literally got cucked right in front of her uh by the new character brodock who is a silly billy villain brodock bio robotic organism designed overwhelmingly for kissing yeah that's that's the joke um so uh what happens is uh they're not able to defeat him even though this is a pretty op team you got Gwenpool, who is a living cartoon who can effectively do anything and knows about everyone because in her world, comics are comics, so she's read, she knows about Tiger, she knows about, uh, they got freaking Quentin Quire, even if he's stepped down in power, he's still a big deal. You got freaking America Chavez, who's like the 1950s Superman in strength, and they couldn't take down uh, Tiger because uh, she has psychic blocks. What about him? He also has psychic blocks. And then, um, yeah, then we cut to, ha, 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 their place is a dump. By the way, they had to start a, uh, uh, they don't have any money because uh, nobody in the Marvel Universe wants to give uh, five heroes money to fight crime yet. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, remember how she was there and she was going to, like, destroy the town? Uh, he just told her to go away. And uh, in the... Look at this. Look at this tangent. This is the big part. They had the woman destroying the town and they made it not happen. So they put this tangent where her head's head is on her foot and hip and she's walking away. She's just walking where? Is she walking deeper into the Pacific Ocean where she's going to drown? Or is she just walking parallel to the uh, littoral zone, it's called in the Marines, you know, the water to the beach to the inland area so she's just paralleling up paralleling the coast so she's just gonna go down to long beach and smash up the port there like they literally just go oh well she's walking away that's done pizza time uh and then we get some more fail humor uh tap water ha 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 he thinks it's better then we get this this is two pages of fail humor it's never ever funny unless you think um like his head's big it's like bigger than normal that's hilarious and then they do all this kind of scott pilgrim stuff not an actual date again not a date not how it happened at all if he ever wore a shirt this would be the moment when he tore it off so then uh they get into they make this decision where they're like uh uh we think he's he is working with a giant tigra so we're going to his base uh you guys watch him and me and hawkeye are but the two hawkeyes are going to go there then everyone starts freaking out uh and and they're like betrayed it doesn't like n all of this stuff is written backward from a punchline so she's like um wouldn't it be funny if they got in a fight and america chavez was like i hate you and we'll be thinking of all the ways to murder you when you return and she's like hm, you go girl Okay, so what can we get her into that? Uh, so then um, they all sit around, and it's silly because his head is big, and he's going to watch uh, VHS. So then we see what this is, completely indistinct from every other issue of Hawkeye, which was canceled for low sales. So they break in easily uh, while literally, it's literally Hawkeye emotionally validating. She, she's like, Clint, am I screwing up? No, you look fine. Not this dummy, the team. This whole team thing. Am I screwing it up? What? No, Kate, you're so good. This, this is, this sounds like two secretaries gabbing over a Cobb salad at lunch. Like, it's stupid. Um, so then, uh, then they, they see a lab, but they have to talk about it in the, they, they talk like idiots. Well, a giant science gun pointed at a table with restraints on it is never great. Yeah, might as well have Supervillain Incorporated printed on it. Clearly, he's been up to serious shenanigans in here. Okay, so... 
How much am I being paid to... Oh, I'm actually being paid for this. My videos are monetized. Oh, <laughs> I'd hate to think anyone spent three ninety nine on this. I wouldn't even read it for three ninety nine. Uh, so then uh, they want to break into something, so he shoots an arrow at it, and then she's like, "Arrows, really?" That's the joke. The guy who shoots arrows shot an arrow at a thing. Superheroes, am I right? Uh, so then they go and he keeps paper files like it's a freaking episode of Magnum P.I. or the Rockford Files. Um, uh, then we cut back to, oh my gosh, reality shows. Uh, I think these people are going to hook up. Let's stay tuned. So they're arguing over Weekend Bernie's and it's LOL so funny because let's have no one talk like a human being. But it's funny because it's random. Who watches Weekend at Bernie's 1 after you've already watched the horrible sequel? It makes no sense. But I still have questions, questions about motivation that I feel certain the first film will clear up. Ha ha ha, they talk like no one ever talks. Yeah, that's not funny. Uh, this is what I call Twitter poisoning. So one of the things about SJWs uh, in general is they all adopt weird alternate personalities for being on Twitter uh, they're like uh, extreme moralists, always, oh, oh, you did this. Oh, yeah. by the transitive factor, if there's uh, 88,000 people and one of them says this, that means you all believe it. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they talk like a character from a Joss Whedon show. Uh, they never, ever talk like people. So they get in conversations that are between their friends that are literally five people with fake personas all talking to each other. It's like some weird like a computer programming experiment. Um, so then they're arguing, uh, hey, it's so funny. People like different things. I enjoyed the irreverent voodoo reanimation plotline as a meta commentary on the preciousness of life. Ha ha ha. And then they start kissing. And then everyone's grossed out because a man and a woman kissed. I have seen Quentin Quire making out with someone. That's my reality now. I can never go back. It's like the image is burned onto my retinas. No matter how much I blink, there it is. You're not eight. Basically, you saw two very unlikable people kiss in the least believable way ever. Um, so then, uh, God, what is this? It's excruciating. Oh, and then she's back. Man, 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 man. Do you remember when the person they suspected as a villain talked to her and then she just kind of walked like 10 miles down the beach? Well, apparently um, she has the ability to uh, turn around and then walk back to the same place she was at. By the way, she is much bigger now because that is a freaking ocean liner. Okay, let's, let's, let's go back. Okay. Here's her about the size of a Ferris wheel and here's her... 20 times whatever. Hey, you want to see a magic trick? Where'd it go? Where'd it That would have fooled Luna. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the Patreon and the Indiegogos, which are getting mailed out today. Ten of them, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to work my way up. It's probably going to be like 10 the first day, like 50 the second day, 100 the third day. Maybe I can get up to like 150, 200 per day and start knocking those uh, out. But uh, Jawbreakers is definitely going to have a fulfillment service, which is bad for me <laughs> because I have to pay for it. Uh, but it's good for you because you're going to get it uh, quicker. And that's probably going to establish the, the baseline for future projects. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I will have more new comic reviews up uh, and probably in a... Boxing video later today. Thanks. Bye.